Hey guys, Mike from 24 Hour Solar Power here today. So thank you, welcome to the channel. If it's your first time you're here and you're interested in batteries and solar and everything in between, remember to subscribe and turn on that notification button. If you do get something out of this video, give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel and the YouTube algorithm. The earlier the better. Now today we're talking about different types of battery inverters. So this is one of the most common things I get asked every single day of my life is, Mike, I want to get a battery ready inverter. Now the honest answer to that there is most inverters on the market are battery ready. You'll see a lot of people that say, you know, every inverter is battery ready or this inverter is battery ready. But what does that really mean? What we're going to get in today are the different types of battery ready inverters and how it's going to shape up for you in your situation. If you are looking to get a battery ready inverter, comment below what sort of inverter that you're looking at. We'd love to know and we'll give you some advice on what that inverter is going to do for you. And hopefully at the end of this video, you understand what battery, what type of battery inverter you're getting and what it's going to do in your situation. What I'm also going to share at the end of this video is my opinion, when the grid's available, the best battery available in the world, it's the most financially viable battery you can buy on the market, and it's a product made in Australia down under. So the inverters when it comes to today is a UPS hybrid, hybrid with backup, AC coupled inverter, AC coupled with battery, and off-grid. So basically UPS, if you think of a UPS, these are more designed as desktop UPSs to sit on your desktop. And what happens when there's a grid failure, they're designed to give you that 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is, whatever the size of the UPS you buy, it's more designed to shut your computer down, save your work and that sort of stuff so you don't lose everything which is you, you were working on. A commercial grade UPS is pretty much the same. What they're designed to do is to say, for example, in a hospital, a UPS will give the hospital half an hour, an hour, or whatever it is that they've designed that system around, more for the generator to fire up and cover that load. UPSs are not designed for a grid failure to run for hours and days on end. A UPS is more designed to that, so the power doesn't get interrupted while you go and fix your backup source. So whether they get the grid fixed up or the generator gets turned on or whatever. So that's what a UPS is they're designed that the, your power is not interrupted that you continually have power and you've been flicked over to backup mode so that literally you can keep things running and go shut your computer down or whatever. So that's more of a backup UPS. Now hybrid inverters. Now Huawei, I'll give you some example in this here. Huawei is actually one of my favorite and probably one of the best hybrid inverters out in the market. It's a really cost effective solution, but also it's not, it's a really high quality product. Now how these hybrid inverters work, they pretty much plug a battery into them. So your solar panels normally that come from the roof are about 500 volts coming down into your inverter. And these work with battery inverters which are 400 to 500 volts. What happens though, these are just designed to really stop you buying energy from the grid from a financial point of view. If the grid fails though, these inverters will not work. So if the grid fails, you actually won't have any backup. Now they actually do have a backup option. Now Solar Edge is one of my other favorite inverters that we designed and installed here. With the Solar Edge, they have a product called a Store Edge. So if you get a Solar Edge inverter, you can get a Store Edge product and work with it. And Huawei also have their own backup capability. Now these things cost. Now the reality is most of the world has a reliable grid. If you have a reliable grid, you just want to use more of your solar energy and you live in an area which very rarely has blackouts, these could be one of the best solutions for you using a Huawei with one of their just using a Huawei with a battery. If you have a reliable grid, if you do want power where no one else has got power, you're gonna to wanna to get one of the backup devices and add to it. Now hybrid inverter with backup. This is what they look like. This is the Solar Edge inverter with the backup built in. Most hybrid inverters with a backup built in will have about a 4,600, 4,600 to a 5,000 watt load that they can handle when the grid's failed and there's no power. Typically, that's a really good size for a backup situation for most people. And these are what's normally called an emergency power supply. So they're not like a UPS. So literally when the grid fails, nothing's gonna go out. The reality with these devices, there could be a small blackout. So you might have to go around and reset all your clocks and things like that if there is a blackout. But they're actually more of an emergency power supply. So they'll run your lights, TVs, and fridges and stuff like that. Um, this here situation would run a kettle and a toaster, but you probably wouldn't want to push it too much more of trying to run too many loads in a blackout situation. 
And that's, I suppose, one of the big reasons that I really push the energy efficiency products. If you've got a really energy efficiency home, in a blackout situation, if you've got one of these, you'll have no problems at all running your lights, your TVs, fridges, turning the kettle on, the toaster, microwave, and things like that. Uh, these will actually also run a really energy efficient air conditioner. The biggest difference, I suppose, with these hybrid backups and a true proper off-grid inverter, these are what's called more of a switch mode. They use electronics to make things happen. They cannot take a generator. So, and at the time of shooting these videos, these products couldn't always check the manufacturer's website. Things change with software and program that says stuff these days. You can buy a product and two years later, they've done a software update that can accept the generator. At the point in time, these products and most hybrid inverters will not accept the generator as a battery backup. So it's something to check out. That's probably the biggest difference between a hybrid and an off-grid. And also another big difference between these hybrid inverters is that 5,000 watt load, that is it. An off-grid inverter actually has a peak. It can spike to double normally what it's recommended rating. So that's more of a hybrid with a backup situation. The question I get asked every single day is that I want a real battery ready inverter. Now these are PV inverters or AC coupled inverters and what makes these brands more battery ready than any other inverter on the market is more their communications protocol. In an off-grid or battery situation where there's a grid failure, the inverter is required to be controlled by frequency. Now what makes these inverters more battery ready than other ones and these inverters will be compatible with pretty much any inverter on the market, a battery ready AC coupled inverter, these four products will work with any single inverter in the, in the off-grid situation. These guys are more focused on that off-grid. They use a SunSpec protocol, which is a communications protocol, which makes these inverters completely programmable and also controllable from another inverter. And that's the important thing. If you just buy a cheap inverter, those cheap inverters, they will have a set frequency that they can turn on off and that's about it. With these inverters here, you have the ability to ramp. Now, the ability to ramp, what that means is if you, if your PV inverter, your grid's failed and you're on batteries and your PV inverter's failed, uh, sorry, the grid's failed and you want your PV inverter on, what happens is these PV inverters will check the frequency every 60 seconds. So you're on batteries, you turn the kettle on, this PV inverter is just sitting there going, da la la la, it's waiting for 60 seconds and then what happens? It'll check the frequency, go, oh, hang on, the frequency's changed, I need to ramp up, I need to give power to some sort of load. Now, the cheap inverters has pretty much come on and off, and every 60 seconds, they will check. With these type of inverters, they can ramp. So what will happen in the, if there's a grid failure, and the AC couple batteries in control of them, it'll actually ramp them down to maybe 150, 200 watts. It'll bring it right down just to run your house load. And that when you require and you turn a bigger load on, they can ramp it back up. So basically these PV inverters, when the sun's out and they're shining, these require the sun to be shining for the work. They'll ramp up and they'll control your loads. You would take less from batteries and we won't be so hard on your batteries. So that's the real difference between these PV inverters that make a true battery ready PV inverter is that it can communicate better with your AC coupled inverter and you're going to require an AC coupled. So a true battery ready inverter, it requires, you can literally bolt the battery straight into it. So literally these red backs or the solar edge, you just plug the battery in or the Huawei, you can plug the battery directly in there and the battery works. That's a true battery ready inverter. Now these PV inverters, they require a grid to work. So in an off grid situation or a blackout situation, these PV inverters, your AC coupled battery becomes the grid or the power to keep these things operating. It's more from a protection point of view for the people working on the lines, that if there is a blackout, that all the inverters shut down from a safety point of view so they don't feed energy back to the grid while everyone's trying to work on the lines and fix the power and things like that. So AC coupled batteries, now what happens, you've got your battery built into it and they've got an inverter built into it. So They'll actually take power from the battery and create the AC to keep the other PV inverter on in a blackout situation. You have your AC coupled inverter, which has batteries and an inverter built into it. So it can actually become a little microgrid and it can keep your PV inverter working. Now, another product that most of these products do require, if you, we go back and we think about the, the Huawei inverter that we are talking about before, where they required the inverter to be added into it. There's another product that they require is called an anti-islanding device. And with the Tesla Powerwalls, as you can see in this picture here, it's got the solar edge inverter, 
the mains power board, and then it's got the gateway. Now what that gateway does is when the grid fails, it makes sure no energy gets fed back to the grid. So it's another really important feature that's required to isolate the grid as a point of view from protection. Now, in my opinion, I think the industry is going to go this way a lot with AC coupled batteries. They're really flexible install. You can sort of, you put the gateway at the, at the meter box and then you can put the battery pretty much anywhere in the property that you want um, that's legally allowed to be installed. So they're pretty simple and you can also keep stacking them. So you can buy, you know, a 13 kilowatt battery with a 5 kilowatt inverter. Then in the future, you put another 13 kilowatt battery with another 5 kilowatt inverter and doubles your off-grid capacity in a blackout situation. So these are really good and I think the whole industry is going to really go down this path because there's a lot of people out there with PV inverters already that want to add batteries and this is the most economical way to do it, add that battery in the future. Now a true off-grid hybrid inverter, the really good thing about these inverters are they literally, they do all of it. Now, not all off-grid inverters do it. I'll use SMA as an example. They have a product called a Sunny Island. It's not a product that can be used hybrid with the grid. It's off-grid. And Victron, you know, they're more or less the same. They've got the big blue box at the top, what's called a Quattro. That's more their off-grid product, which can interact with the grid, but it also requires another product to be safe and to standards and things like that, where the blue box down the bottom, the MultiPlus, uh, that's actually an anti-island and built into it. Now, in sense, what these ones do is they literally take power from batteries and power your load. So they can work, so they do not take solar panels directly into these ones here, so they work with the AC coupled inverters. So your AC coupled inverter is working with your, your PV inverter, it's running your house loads, and then these inverters sense that, okay, you're not using everything, we will charge the batteries and put excess back to the batteries, and then when the batteries are full, it'll feed the excess back to the grid. So this electronics is a really good product, which is actually made here in Australia as well. And it's a all-in-one sort of hybrid, hybrid inverter that can be used in off-grid, standalone UPS. So these inverters are really programmable and can do pretty much whatever you want with them. Here's some examples of the AC coupled inverters. And what's really good about these inverters as well is probably the biggest difference between these inverters and a hybrid inverter. They have the ability to spike. So if you get a 5,000 watt inverter, so say for example, for three seconds, they can double their capacity. So you can turn a load on for 10,000 watts for three seconds and it'll power that load. Now with these AC coupled options here, you see the ABB in the, in the phronesis here. Now what's happening here is the PV inverter shining and it's charging back to the off-grid inverter. So the PV inverter runs your daily loads, it goes back to the PV inverter, to the off-grid inverter and it'll actually put that excess into batteries. And what it's not using in an off-grid situation, it'll turn the inverter off. So it'll turn the PV inverter off and ramp it right down to next to nothing. And that's why in an off-grid situation, it's really important. We found that the, the ABB FEMA products, they are the fastest that we've ever dealt with off-grid. So literally, if you're in an off-grid situation or even a grid-connected situation, you want the speed. And the real difference is potentially of having a blackout and not having a blackout in an off-grid situation. We turn the kettle on, the inverter can ramp up, provide that load and help support the load. Where a cheap inverter, it'll take 60 seconds and it's either on or off. It can't just sit there on the island and provide a couple of hundred watts load and do that sort of stuff. So that's a couple of examples of the off-grid situation. So the, the ABB theme is the product that we've used the most off-grid that uh, we've found that's the fastest in the industry. Now micro inverters, we'll just touch on micro inverters here. The micro inverters from a battery point of view, if you do go down a, a, an end phase micro inverter situation, you are limited with their batteries. Now with their batteries, they actually just take the micro inverter. So the micro inverter, as an example, can take 270 watts each panel. So if you put a 330 watt panel on a 270 watt micro inverter, you will never see more than 270 watt out of that micro inverter. So it'll sit at that all day long. The good thing about end phase, on a roof, you have different faces and each panel works individually. It's AC running from the roof, so it's a bit safer to work with for the installers. It's a lot more efficient from the point of view of reducing energy and things like that. So there's a lot less losses with Enphase. And each panel works individually. Where a typical string inverter is a one panel gets shaded or one panel gets damaged, it pulls down the whole string. Where these Enphase ones, they work individually. Now what they've done, they've taken their micro inverter from the roof and just put it into a battery. So it's that same concept. You only have 270 watts to pull from the battery. 
they do do different sizes and stuff like that. So when you're looking at this video, remember to go to the company's website and check what size inverter that they do do, because I know as shooting this video, they're about to release a new product on the market, which is bigger and better. So they've taken that micro inverter from the roof and put in a battery. So each battery will say it's got about 1.2 kilowatts, it's got about a kilowatt hour of usable capacity of battery storage and a 270 watt inverter attached to that. So if you think about it like this, if you turn on a thousand watt and you've got an end phase system that's dark, if you've got an end phase system the sun's not shining, you pull on a thousand watts from the grid, 270 will come from battery and the, the rest will come from the grid. If you want to power that whole load, you require four batteries to cover that whole load and deal with that there. They're a really good financially viable system to add batteries in the future, but end phase is a product that up front does cost a little bit more um, because you do have an inverter on every single panel. The really good thing about that is over time and in the future is that you can add panels. If a panel gets damaged, it doesn't pull the rest down. So they're a really good product. You don't require to use them just purely because they have shading issues or, or weird faces on a roof. Now monitoring. If you're really considering installing batteries, I'd highly recommend to understand your load. And if we have a look at this graph here, so the re reality is if you want to install batteries, in your, if you've got solar system on your house right now, you really require to understand, okay, well, do I have enough energy to feed back to the grid? Am I feeding enough back to the grid of a day that you can put into a battery and pull out later on of a night? So in this situation here, the yellow is what's getting fed back to the grid and the rest is consuming and what's going on. I'd highly reckon put some, put some monitoring on, understand how much you're feeding it to the grid how much energy you're using overnight from the grid to figure out how much, how big of a battery that you want to do. And what you want to do is do your numbers in about 12 hours. Um, the reality is in the middle of winter, living from batteries, you're actually on batteries for 12 to 14 hours in the depth of winter by the time that usable power is gone from the sun and by the time the sun comes back up. Remember, daylight hours don't equal solar power hours. So it's important to understand okay, well, what's the longest period I'm going to be from batteries? And is it really important to always be from batteries? A lot of networks, you might, you know, I'll just pick on Sydney, for example, here in Australia. In Sydney, in the northern beaches, the peak time is between 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock at night. So batteries really can make sense financially in those situations because it's just about being on batteries during the peak times when the energy prices almost double. You're using your battery, and at 8 o'clock when your battery's flat and you go back to off-peak energy, all the way back around to that two o'clock in the afternoon, which gives your solar panels enough time to charge your batteries, run your day loads and do everything before you go on to battery. So monitoring something's really important. And I'd, if you're really interested in installing batteries, I'd get this information and data first before going down the path. Some of these products can cost $1,000 to install up front, but it can save you thousands and thousands of dollars on the other end of getting it right in the first place. Now here's the bonus I was talking about at the start of the video, the best battery in my opinion when the grid's available. If you want to do this to save money, this is probably one of the best batteries you can install as a battery alternative. Now if we think about what is a battery, a battery is just simply putting energy away to use later on. Now hot water is one of the best batteries available on the market, it's 100% renewable. Now this product here is an Australian made product called a Catch Power. This is a Catch Green, this is a low cost entry level product. And this is their Catch Blue, which is connected to the internet, got some smarts and stuff like that in it. Now, basically, what this product does is what happens when it starts seeing your solar system to feed energy back to the grid, it diverts that energy to your hot water and it heats your hot water. So it's putting energy away to use later on. Now, if it's something you really want to do and you don't really have that big of a PV system, this example here for this customer, they have a huge solar system. It's actually really not that big. It's a six kilowatt inverter with eight kilowatts of panels. And that's another thing I really recommend. If you're going to install solar, fill the roof. That's just it. Every roof face you've got, cover it with solar panels. Don't leave anything unturned. So in this situation, have a look here. The green is what the catch power has actually diverted that energy. So rather than feed it back to the grid, it's heated the hot water with it. And then the yellow is what it started feeding back to the grid. Later on that night or that afternoon, as you can see, it started, the customers used some hot water. This is actually a hairdressing salon. They've used a little bit of hot water of that afternoon. It's a hairdressing salon that's run from home. And then overnight, they've had some showers and stuff like that. So it's actually topped the hot water up with a minimum amount of energy overnight. So they've got that hot water in the morning. So from a financial point of view, 
you can't beat these catch bales if, if you really want to consider using batteries from a financial point of view. Most houses use about 10 kilowatt hours of battery capacity overnight and a hot water system, you know, a 350 litre hot water tank will take about 10 kilowatt hours or 10, kil yeah, 10 kilowatt hours of energy to heat that hot water up. So I highly recommend if you want to do it from a financial point of view is install a battery alternative. Something like this catch powers are made in Australia and they're available pretty much anywhere in the world. Now my opinion, when it comes to installing batteries, it all comes down to really what your intention is. The reality is if you want to install batteries from a financial point of view, using a product like a Huawei without the backups, probably going to be your best bang for your buck. If you're looking to do it purely for financials, the Huawei or look at something like a catch power product. If you want cold beer and air conditioning when no one else has got it, look at more of an alternative. The hybrid inverters are good. The reality with the hybrid inverter though is there is gonna be moments in time where you're just like everyone else. My personal experience of living off grid for the last 10 years, when there has been a blackout, normally what's happened is that it's been raining, I've flat batteries anyway, the grid's gone down, and I'm only normally about half an hour to an hour behind everyone else before we're in a blackout situation. So the hybrid inverters really, they're more for that economical end. In most situations, they'll give you a bit of a backup in the right, so if the sun's shining and things like that, you will have blackout, blackout protection. If you do really want that reliability, so if you run a business from home that's got a cool room, for example, and you've got a whole load of meat or things like that, and you don't lose that stuff that's more important to you, and you could potentially live in a situation in an area where you have blackout for days, you're really gonna to wanna to look at a proper off-grid situation they can shove a generator into. Um, I've had customers, I've actually got one customer that she said, I'll never ever use a generator in my life, Mike. And um, I think she's had a system for about three years and she's never used a generator, but she's also the type of person that's willing to, when it's raining, to sit around with candles uh, and operate everything from candles. So that's what it really comes down to for you and your situation. If it's from a financial point of view, I'd look at a catch power or a Huawei type of inverter. The Huawei is probably one of the most best quality available around on the market. If you're looking for that, maybe a backup from time to time, if the grid goes out, the hybrid inverter with the backup, they're not gonna have the best financial payback period because they do have extra infrastructure in them. They do require extra installation costs for that network protection, anti-island and things like that. And if you do just really want power and no one else has got it, I'd go on off grid situation. Thank you for watching the video always at the end. If you haven't already, if you've got some of this video, like, subscribe and share, and we'd love to hear in your comments below of what you got out of it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.